What's up guys, uh, welcome back to the next video on learning algorithms. My name is Kyuri Yazdani and you guys are watching my channel Coraiwood. Alright, so in the previous video we've seen the asymptotic uh, analysis and asymptotic notations. So in this video we're going to see exactly what is uh, asymptotic notations. Alright, so the most important ones are that uh, we're going to use in our algorithms. It's going to be the big O notation. It was originally called uh, Omicron, but now it's... Uh, everyone calls this big O so you can you can see this one is uh, and we denote that by big O and the second one is uh, a big Omega and uh, we call just call it uh, big O and it's big Omega because uh, keep in mind we have a small O in small Omega as well and the last one is uh, theta and uh, we're going to see the theta notation so the most important ones that we're going to use in algorithms especially in uh, asymptotic notation is a big O which is the worst case upper bound omega is lower bound and uh, theta notation is upper and lower so keep in mind that that's how we're going to use that uh, this one's upper bound this one's lower bound and that's uh, upper and bound this one you can say this one's tight tight bound so we're going to see what is um, asymptotic notation so because if you have uh, say our um, here this one is uh, t of n that's uh, time input of n and you guys are going to see our this one's n you guys are going to see that's our team simply you guys don't want to confuse you guys i just want to put a time so uh, this is uh, going to be the time how long it takes say uh, we have a function here and our function is going to be like that growing up this is the rate of the growth of the function and that's the input and what is what we mean by input is we're gonna put the numbers and say our number is one two three and our number is growing our input number is growing all the way to the n and this one's going to be f of n so that one's gonna be our uh, f of n, which is this guy here, these numbers, because as our uh, numbers, we put it, uh, I just put it like that. As uh, we have, we put in the input, whatever input, as our input grows, and look at the time, and it's growing up, and that's our uh, rate of growth so it means that uh, if we give uh, larger uh, inputs to the given problem and uh, if we see that our uh, time increase is going to be like this and uh, keep in mind this is going to be a function of the size input so that's our uh, going to be the size this guy is here and that's going to be our uh, f of n so i'll uh, remove this so I'm going to put a f of n. So it's a function of the input size, whatever size you guys putting here. So our time increasing that way. Keep in mind that this is our time increase. And as our in input increases as well, so that's our input. Then we're going to see what is the worst case, our uh, upper bound for this function which is this guy here uh, worst case and uh, we're gonna see that uh, worst case our uh, you're gonna see that uh, big O is uh, upper bound so now we have a function of n and that's n and that's gonna be our time and that's gonna be our uh, function which our input and our input is growing and that's going to be our uh, rate of growth and uh, now we're going to have another function which is going to be like this one so now we have uh, this function here and that's our second function and this function is greater than f of n so you're looking here that's our new function and this function is going to be greater than uh, f of n okay so now we're going to call this uh, function uh, c uh, times g of n c of uh, g of n 
and uh, after some limit we're gonna see here or uh, asymptote here and it's gonna be the n naught so that's n and that's n naught so now uh, we're gonna see that uh, our f of n what's the time complexity it's compared to these functions on the top then uh, we're gonna see shortly so after finding this we're going to see what is the time complexity or worst case time for this one then we're going to see another function here which is uh, c of uh, g n in uh, such a way that uh, after some input the n naught and uh, the value of uh, c of uh, g of n always greater than uh, f of n so now we say that um, our uh, function uh, f of n is uh, less than or equal to c of uh, c times keep in mind sometime we're going to see this one as a time c of uh, g of n c of g of n so after all the input so we're going to see that uh, our in input is n is uh, greater than or equal to n naught now we're gonna see that um, c is uh, greater than zero. So and uh, n naught n naught is uh, greater than or uh, equal to one. So if we satisfy this function, this function here. So you can you can see that if we satisfy this one, then uh, we're going to say that uh, f of n. So f of n is equal to big O, which is this guy here. Big O of uh, g of n. So g of n. And uh, another way to interpret this one, f of n is uh, smaller than uh, o g of n. So give a look at here. That's our um, big O. So f of n, uh, you guys can see this one. So it's nothing but uh, f of n is smaller than o g of n. All right. So now we're gonna come here and uh, we're gonna remove. So because we wanna see the rest of our uh, slide. So I'm gonna remove, uh, I hope you guys uh, got the idea. So now we've seen that uh, the expression O G of N for some function uh, G of N represents a set of functions and a function F of N is in this if it satisfy the following condition. And uh, we have uh, proved it to you guys that f of n is equal to o g of n means that uh, there exists. Uh, so how, that's how we're gonna read that that there exists a numeral number n naught and positive constant c such that f of f of uh, is bounded by uh, c times uh, g of n for all sufficiently large n. So that's how you guys gonna read this one. F of n is uh, bounded by c g of n for all sufficiently large n we assume uh, of n is non-negative here and we want f of n to be bounded by g of n and as we said that uh, just just a few minutes ago or you can uh, interpret that uh, with the so if you've seen this one f of n is equal to o g of n means that there are some constant c is greater than zero and not is uh, uh, greater than zero it means they all both of them is going to be positive there is this numerical number n naught and positive constant c such that uh, f of is bounded by uh, cg of n for all sufficiently large n we assume f of n is non-negative here and we want f of n to be, be bounded by uh, g of n or we can see in another way to think is that um, that's a definition o g of n and that's going to be c of g of n f of n is equal to o g of n but another way is to think of that uh, o g big o which is this guy here 
or g of n is equal to f of n there is this a constant uh, the same way as we've seen this one c of greater than zero and n naught is greater than zero such that and we will we want to see that uh, that's a big o f of n c g of n for all n and uh, such that f is bounded by c of g of n for all uh, sufficiently larger n so that's what we going to see that's our uh, function so this is two ways to think of uh, f of n is equal to o g of n there is a two functions here we're going to see that our o g of n is equal to f of n so uh, whichever way you guys want to think so there are two ways all right so asymptotic notation we continue our discussion uh, and we say that uh, as n approaches uh, infinity, theta n square always beat uh, theta n cube. So we have uh, theta n square here and theta n cube. So shortly we're going to see that's our uh, plan and we're going to see that's uh, time and that's uh, n because that's input uh, numbers. If n gets bigger, if this guy gets bigger, we describe that absolute precise behavior. If we have uh, theta of uh, n square, is always be faster for sufficiently large n than uh, a theta n cube. Even if you run uh, theta n square for slower computer and theta n cube for faster computer. So even if this guy here if we do this one this one is always going to be slower than this guy and this guy is going to always going to beat this guy so even if we run this one on a slow computer and this one's going to be on the faster computer this guy is going to beat this guy here asymptotic notation satisfy our problem of relative and absolute speed because we can do our algorithms uh, no matter what computer we use and as i said to you guys the relative speed and absolute speed so the relative speed is uh, it depends which computer so if you do it on a faster computer it's going to be easy but if you do it on every computer we can uh, get the result but absolute speed is uh, we're going to do algorithm no matter what sort of computer if it is old uh, credit computer or uh, it's going to be brand new computer so it's going to run the same so there is no matter what sort of uh, computer so uh, we're going to take the computer or the machine out because uh, our uh, algorithm is going to run fast on every uh, computer. So if you look at the growth, the asymptotic won't change. And uh, we are talking about this guy here. So we have uh, theta n square and uh, theta n cube. And this guy is going to be the n cube and this guy is going to be the theta n square and as i said to you guys even if you guys run this one on uh, old computer and this guy is going to run on the new computer whatever you're going to do this guy is going to beat this guy all the time so theta n square is going to beat the theta n uh, cube all the time so no matter what the computer there's always going to this uh, there is always going to be some point and not so if you look in here, that's uh, our uh, the first one is going to be the theta n cube is going that way and that's uh, theta uh, n square is going this way. There's always going to be n naught. So there's always going to be our asymptote here at some point. We're going to get it here and you guys look in here that's uh, n naught. We, if we go larger the theta n square is cheaper than uh, theta n cube algorithms no matter how much advantage you give it at the beginning or to the speed of the computer you're uh, tuning with so look at here we are uh, giving advantage this guy here because this guy if you are uh, using running that on a new computer because uh, this guy is we try to give this one advantage and uh, this guy doesn't have an advantage here because this guy is uh, uh, look at the time wise they are, uh, this guy is got advantage and even if you do that one then uh, this guy is going to be uh, beat this guy here and that is a uh, asymptotic notation that's how we maybe we look at the time so 
and here you are going to see that uh, even if you give the theta n cube uh, the advantage uh, means if you give it the advantage and this guy here doesn't have the advantage this guy is going to beat this guy all the time so we're going to see this one again and it's very easy to understand as n uh, approaches the infinity and if you look in here uh, theta n square always beats uh, theta n uh, cube so in uh, if you go back for a, for, for a few videos then uh, we're going to see that's in square is here and uh, n cube is here then uh, we have uh, our other speeds then we had our absolute speeds gone from there then our uh, log n then our uh, linear then we had uh, our uh, is quadratic then we had our uh, cube then we have the, our factorial, then we had our exotic, whatever we had. And uh, I'm gonna remove these ones. So this is asymptotic notation. And uh, if uh, n gets bigger, if you describe the absolute precise behavior, if you have n cube is always be faster for sufficiently, sufficiently large n, then a theta n cube if we run theta n square for slow computers and theta n cube for faster computers. Asymptotic notation satisfy our problem of relative and absolute speed because we can do our algorithms no matter what computer we use. If we look at the growth, the asymptotic won't change. We are, have always uh, theta n uh, square and theta n cube. So that's our uh, theta n square and that's our uh, theta n cube. There is always going to be at some point n and not, which is this guy here. And that's going to be our asymptote. If we go larger, the theta n uh, square is cheaper than uh, theta n cube algorithms. No matter how much uh, we advantage you give it at the beginning or to the speed of the computer you're uh, tuning, tuning with. So if you look in here, no matter how much advantage this guy has got advantage now. So then this guy, but uh, this guy is going to be faster. So you guys going to see this going to be a lot faster than this guy. So we're going to wrap up our asymptotic notations. And the next video, we're going to see the big O notation. We're going to see the omega notation. And we're going to see the theta notation. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you have any question or comment, leave it in the comment box. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video and bye.